The Science of Learning Research Center presents Psychology, Education, Neuroscience, P.E.M. Pen Principle Number 9. Active Recall Trumps Passive Review. Let's open this video by taking a quick trip down memory lane. I want you to think back to your school days. No, not the fun bits. I want you to think about taking tests. Most tests are typically composed of a combination of multiple choice and open answer questions. As a student, which did you prefer? If you're like most people, you probably preferred multiple choice questions where you got to select the answer from a number of choices rather than open-ended questions where you had to come up with your own answer. And the reason for this is because these different types of questions actually test different types of memory systems. Multiple choice questions test what's called recognition memory. This is where one need only match current content with previous exposure to the same information. Open-ended questions, on the other hand, test what's called recall memory. This is where one must actively retrieve information from the past with few or no guiding cues to help. As can be predicted, recognition memory is often seen as a weaker, more shallow form of memory, while recall is seen as a stronger, more deep form of memory. And it's here where we see the connection to education. During learning or practice, undertaking passive review strategies, such as uh, rereading a book passage or copying notes, serves to bolster recognition memory, while undertaking active recall strategies, such as open note cards or summarizing, serves to bolster recall memory. And we see this differentiation in the brain. Individuals asked to simply reread a list of previously learned words show relatively weaker neural activity focused mainly in shallow memory networks, whilst individuals asked to actively recall a previously learned list of words demonstrate stronger neural activity in deeper memory networks. And this pattern has shown to hold true in the classroom as well. Language students who were asked to actively recall word pairs during several study sessions produced 50% higher exam scores than students asked to simply reread and review the same word pairs. Similarly, English students who were asked to actively recall details from a reading passage demonstrated stronger long-term memory and transfer of learned material than students who were simply asked to reread the passage several times. Classroom application. So we've seen that using active recall strategies can improve learning, memory, and transfer compared to using passive review strategies. So how can we use this in the classroom? One strong active recall strategy involves using flashcards with a question on one side and the correct answer on the other. Organized in this way, the questions on the flashcards will force students to actively recall relevant information before getting feedback by flipping the card over. Another active recall strategy involves asking students to freely write down as much as they can possibly remember following a reading or a lesson. This procedure allows students to actively retrieve information, thereby deepening their processing of the material. Finally, teachers may want to consider integrating frequent low or no-stakes quizzes. So long as these quizzes favor open-ended rather than multiple choice questions, teachers can encourage frequent active recall of previously learned material. Ideas and Future Directions Throughout this video, we've been stressing the importance of recall memory, but it's worth noting that recognition memory is an important capacity as well. Therefore, it's worth asking, how can we best ensure that active recall strategies and passive review strategies work well together? In other words, is there an ideal review to recall ratio that can best ensure the formation of deep and accurate memories? An important question with important implications. On behalf of everyone here at the Science of Learning Research Center, thanks for watching.